Welcome to Jump Shots from the Goal Line. I'm your host, Jonathan Dugan. I am joined, as always, by Mr. John Henningsen, but we have two special guests tonight. Um, we have Mr. John Sanchez. Yes, there are three Johns on the podcast tonight. And then we have Mr. Matt Hesse um, as well. We are talking World Cup tonight, as promised. Uh, the World Cup starts on Sunday with Ecuador playing uh, Qatar or Qatar, however you want to pronounce it. I don't give a shit. Um, but with Elon Musk deciding to completely explode Twitter, this is your only source of information for the World Cup before Sunday. Um, because when you wake up in the morning, Twitter will no longer be a thing. So tune in to Jump Shots from the Goal Line for all your World Cup needs. We are extremely lucky to have these two gentlemen on the pod. Um, I'm a I'm a footy fan, but I'm a little green to it. Uh, Henny does not really have a whole lot of history <laughs> with with footy, but these two gentlemen. Uh, excuse me, I, uh, I was a pretty prolific scorer as like a ten to twelve year old. So I, that's with easy. Your size, I think I, I think I understand size, the sport. Yeah. I think I understand what's going on. You kick it into the goal. I, I think I get it. Yeah, Listen, it's, it's simple. Henny. It's easy. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, he watched Henny with your. <laughs> Henny, with your not an Apple your, subscriber. Sorry to disappoint. With oh. your size, Henny, you were you would be the perfect number nine, number ten. I I would trust you with my life. All right. So, and I know oh, when we yeah. talk about our those are the ages our, I was awesome at it too. By the way, about nine and ten. <laughs> when we talked about our video game draft, you did say that you are pretty prolific as well with Chelsea, some drug action. So I'm sure you'll have some level of knowledge that you can at least add to tonight. But boys, like I said, the, the game starts Sunday. I feel like we've been talking about this forever, right? Uh, Qatar being the, the World Cup host has been extremely controversial, com- very impractical. We're literally in the middle of a Premier League season, a, a League A uh, season, Serie A season. But everything comes to a stop. Everything comes to a pause because Set Bladder took some money. Are you are you boys ready for Sunday? Or are we are we pumped? What are we thinking? Been waiting for quite some time. Uh, you know, as a U.S. fan, especially right. You know, missing the last World Cup and going through all that and watching the pain and anguish on them those guys' faces and now seeing this whole new group coming in, man, I'm I'm beyond excited. I love it. Yeah, this is kind of the U.S.'s golden generation, which I'm sure we'll we'll jump more into detail about that when we uh, jump through the group stages. Hesse, I know you're excited too, right? I know you're a Tottenham fan. You watch a lot of footy. I think you watch some MLS as well. Are you are you pretty psyched for Sunday? Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty stoked for Firefest 2.0. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking forward to getting my heart broken by USA at some point in the tournament. Yeah, hopefully, you know. hopefully it's not as bad as 2014 because uh, our boy John Sanchez here, uh, we all work together, um, yeah. and I sit very in close proximity to John. And every time we bring up 2014, I, a little bit of PTSD just comes down his cheek. Fucking so. Wandalowski, like that's all I can say. <laughs> uh. can I, yeah. So, so can I jump in and ask? I, I kind of want Hesse. I've known you a long, long time, so I'm not going to pretend like. I've just met you, but where are you, uh, John and, 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 and Hesse in that order in terms of like your USA soccer fandom? Like, do you, do you oh paint boy. your face? Do you paint your nipples? Oh. Like how will, how far are you willing to go, you know, in your USA fandom? I just kind of want to know. Cause I, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a USA guy when it comes to world cup, but I just latch on the same way I do in the Olympics where I'm like, I right. totally understand the hundred meter race, you know? So for your guy, for you guys, like, what does it look like? You know? Um, so, uh, you know, my nipples are tattooed, not just painted. Um, but no, um, I, you know, I don't go on and get all crazy like that, but I've been, I've been watching these guys and I, yeah, I love following them. I love following the, you know, the players that are over in Europe. Um, you know, I'm a veteran, you know, so I got this, I feel, I guess a little connection with the, you know, the States and, you know, having having the, those colors on your back, man, there's nothing quite like that. And it is just wonderful to watch these guys. And I love it. I love seeing the babies come up, seeing the old guys, hearing them all talking. Like, yeah, I'm just – I'm a huge fan of U.S. soccer, like completely. 
And John, you're you actually still continue to play soccer, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I try as much as I can. I do a little over forty men's league, uh, open division men's league. Play some pickup. I ref now. I went to the dark side and I became a ref just because it's you know. Boo. <laughs> boo. <laughs> <laughs> boo. <laughs> also, I did it, but also boo. Right? You know, <laughs> make a little extra money, and then you get the opportunity to kind of get out there with these kids and kind of you know coach them a little bit and see what they've got to offer. It's kind of fun, you know. Um, from yeah, that you and you and FIFA have a lot in common. You know, oh, trying to make a little yeah. bit of money off the game of football. Yeah, so. Straight. I wish I. <laughs> I love it. And, and Hesse, do you want to go ahead and give a little bit of background on your USA fandom? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I dabble in some FIFA. You know, not corruption, but you know, the video game. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, it's been fun watching, you know, the World Cup all over all these years. But, you know, they keep saying this is the golden generation and this is, you know, the youngest World Cup team at age average age of 23, I think it is. So yeah, it's insane. It's interesting. It'll be interesting to see what we we get. But it's been exciting to see a lot of the U.S. players coming over to the Premier League and getting kind of mm-hmm. elevating the U.S. status. So that's been fun to watch. So it's going to be interesting to see how they play together. Yeah. Totally. Well, hey, let's jump into a little bit of the background story just for our listeners that might not be um, too knowledgeable about what's going on. Um, Obviously, the World Cup is in Qatar, which is literally a country that is smaller than uh, Manchester, England. Uh, It is located in the Middle East, tons of oil money. Um, There's been a lot of questions asked how a country of that nature was able to outbid uh, countries like the U.S. or England for this World Cup bid, especially after Russia getting it in 2018. Both of those were announced at the same time. A lot of corruption. FIFA getting um, absolutely obliterated by the FBI in 2016. A lot of people went to prison. A lot of people had to step down. Um, Boys, what what are we thinking about this situation in Qatar? Like, you know, how did we get here? What should we expect? What are we seeing? Oh, man. I mean, it's just a disgrace when you look at it and you think about it, like, uh, you know, everything that you were just saying. And then there's no history of, uh, you know, the game over there. The mm-hmm. they, they I think they attract what maybe a thousand people, you know, a game if they have any kind of professional league that's going on over there. So there's absolutely no history. They're trying to have. Um, FIFA build the infrastructure for this country to make it, you know, just more than what it is. And uh, you're building all these stadiums uh, that nobody's ever going to use. Nobody's ever going to see them again. Like it's just, uh, mm. it's just gross, in my opinion. Yeah. But cool cars, or <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I mean, you know. But I think what John said mostly, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, they have, they have literally had to build the stadiums what within like the last ten years, well, and then they're even having to build up cities and. Mm -hmm. quasi hotel rooms um on the backs of basically slave labor right yeah it's not even sorry go ahead john oh no i was just gonna say you know exactly that you're bringing people over from other countries um you know to work and you're sending home you know coffins like it's just disgusting you know yeah i see what were you gonna say yeah it's not even just you know just building stadiums they're having to build all that infrastructure they're building you know the hotels that you're mentioning the their railways roads that they didn't have before so it's just you know it's just going to go to go to crap after the tournament and then on top of that all those people dying throughout that whole process right yeah and you know hesse you mentioned it at the the start of the podcast right like fire (laughs) fest 2.0 i I think you know what you're referencing there are some of the pictures coming out of these you know, World Cup villages, if you want to call them that, of what are basically just shipping containers shipping that containers have been turned and into, yeah, like intense cities and stuff. It's it's absolutely insane, and it just goes to show just how completely corrupt the organization was leading up to this point. There's a really good Netflix documentary out right now, um, all about FIFA and the just the shady dealings that went on behind the scenes for the past like 50 to 60 years. I highly, highly recommend our listeners to go check out that um, documentary before the World Cup starts just to give you a lot of background knowledge on what's kind of going on. Um, but it it's absolutely insane, right? But at the end of the day, I think we can really um, 
we can probably take the thought that corruption is everywhere, right? We see it with the Olympic Committee. We see it um, really with any kind of sporting event, right? And FIFA is no different. This time it's just a lot more amplified and um, the world's watching because this is the like the world's tournament, right? I would say in some capacities, this might even be bigger than the Olympics. Do you guys also kind of feel that way? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Penny, Penny, I'm sure you probably disagree, but. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't disagree. Like, I think the World Cup, like, genuinely matters, which is why. Um, well, I mean, what's disappointing about the World Cup is the same thing as disappointing the Olympics. And John alluded to it, like, right? It's like the way in which it shows up and it's disgusting. And then you're like, there, there's all the problems that, you know, everybody here has mentioned. And it, it just gets really tough. And you're like, man, I'm supposed to be excited about this. And you want to be, right? right. But when it's not. Frankly, when the Olympics isn't in Japan or it isn't in the United States or it isn't in a place that you feel comfortable with the politics of the situation and mm -hmm. uh, like the way equity is handed out and all those things. And not to say that it's perfect in any of those places. It's not. But when it happens at a place like this, you're like, oh, gross, what's happening? And then you try to get excited about the fun of it. Like, that's what I'm saying. You know, I, I kid about like, oh, you got to paint your face and this and that. But it's like it's fun to root for the U.S. right in a tournament yeah. like this. And, and I do think the World Cup matters. And I do think it's something that's very inclusionary and that's what's awkward about it when it has all this controversy leading into it unfortunately but you know that said it is like you mentioned a sporting event the nfl is not perfect baseball is not perfect basketball is not perfect there's problems in everything so at the end of the day you know lace them up let's watch them play and that's what we're here yeah. to talk about for the most part you know yeah and what i what i love about it right is you get a lot of people that won't watch uh soccer or football for our foreign listeners um, for three and a half years, right? They won't watch a single Premier League game. They won't watch a single Serie A game, a La Liga game. But when it comes to representing your country, um, especially in the U.S., people get passionate about it, right? And you'll root for an entire team of individuals that you know nothing about, and you go into every game thinking you should win, right? Especially at least in the U.S., that's just kind of our mindset out here. Um, and it just makes for a really, really fun time. You get to see the best of the best, um, you know, team up with their their compatriots and take on a bunch of other countries. And it is literally the best competition in terms of athletics, if you ask me, because you're it's the world. Right. And it's incredible for me. What's really exciting. And I know three out of the four of us pay attention to this, but is even the lead up to the world cup, right? Like the CONCACAF games, the, um, the, the African cup, all that kind of stuff that leads up to this for the selection of the teams that will actually be playing all of like, there's been so many moments that have led up to this point um, that it's extremely exciting. And, and John, you mentioned it earlier, right? Like the U S not even making the world cup four years ago. And now like how Hesse said, coming in with the youngest team in, in competition, there's a lot to be excited about, and especially with the World Cup going to be in North America in four years from now, everybody should be paying attention to this team because this is who we're going to be rooting for, especially in four years, right? Yeah, it's it's just, uh, you know, it, it brings people together, you know, like it, and that's what it's supposed to do. That's what sport is supposed to do, right? It's supposed to gather people around and, and you're supposed to pick somebody to root for and cheer for them. And then when they win, you feel that with them, right? You get that excitement, you get that joy. Um, you remember where you were when that happened, um, you know, talking about the last time they were, you know, on the, when the U.S. has been in the Cup of Four and the goal against Algeria, when you get to watch the video from footage from all the different bars and all the different random locations all across the country, everybody's united, yep. everybody's there together, and they are going nuts and losing their mind. And when you can do that, at, you know, for a month out of the year all around the world, and it's not, you know, not just the United States, like all these countries, they stop and they watch these games and they pay attention. The world tunes in. And it just, yep. when you think about that as a global, just, uh, man, it's just, it blows my mind and it's so exciting. And it's just, yeah, like, like there's no other event like it. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think it's fair to say that the world cup is like the Kylie Jenner Pepsi of the world, right? We're just <laughs> reuniting everybody for a month. So uh, yeah, but not those it. weird caffeine free, uh, free cans. Ben really hates those. I don't know if. For those who've been listening as a legacy podcast, uh, Ben hates those cans. Uh, we're we're, we're full-fledged Pepsi, baby. No, you got to have Perfect, boys. Well, I think we gave enough background for uh, the games, right? So why don't we jump into 
um, how, how the games kind of work. And we'll jump into kind of what we're looking at, what you guys are looking at. Um, right now, right, we just uh, – about, what, a month or two ago, uh, we had the drawing for the actual groups, like what countries will be playing each other um, initially because how the World Cup works is you have, I believe, what is it, uh, eight or six groups that – all the countries are part of Do you guys know eight groups eight groups perfect thanks um and you play through those group stages and whoever the top two teams are coming out of it points wise um that is who moves on to the elimination rounds right and that's where it gets really fun but the group stages are also really fun too because you get to see these these nations that are typically way smaller don't have near the um resources that somebody like an england or a spain or even a usa has but they compete their ass off and it's super fun to watch so why don't we start off um with group a let me pull that up really quick we have in group a we have qatar ecuador senegal and the netherlands um has i'm gonna start out with you first you know what can you tell us about that first group so Netherlands, obviously the favorite. Um, after that, I mean, I think Senegal is mm-hmm. second. They dominated the, the African uh, Nations Cup. And then after that, I don't really know between Ecuador and Qatar. I mean, Qatar has done, isn't a slouch team, but I don't know how much success they're actually going to have in this World Cup. Yeah, for sure. And John, what can you tell us about like the individual players from those nations? Well, I mean, first off, the thing that kind of jumps out that makes me just heartbroken is Mane not being, um, you know, able to play, Uh, missing Mm -hmm. the World Cup because of injury, not being able to make it back. So I think that's going to probably hurt Senegal. Um, But you look at Netherlands and their experience, um, you know, the depth that they have too. Uh, But Ecuador is... Ecuador is going to be a scrappy South American team. I mean, you look at anybody coming out of Conmebol, Bowl, and it's one of the deepest uh, qualifying regions out there. You know, I mean, UEFA and Conmebol, Bowl, but it's it's so tough to come out of there. So if you're able to, you know, make it out of that, I think you're going to have a fighting chance. And, you know, Qatar, um, you know, I don't know. If they bought enough <laughs> players, who knows what, what could happen, right? Yeah, I, I wanted to kind of hit on that, right? Because that's also part of the uh... – Kind of the uproar about Qatar is they're such a small nation state that like and they don't have the tradition of football that like, all right, well, who the hell is even going to play on this team? Right. And I think both of you can probably speak to this, but they they ended up actually naturalizing some guys from like Colombia and I think even Ecuador. Right. Like th- wasn't that a thing that kind of happened? Yeah, I mean, you know, I saw that they were <clears throat> just basically trying to buy whoever they possibly could. Yeah, and, you know, you're – but you look at a lot of the countries that are trying to do that now anyways. Uh, you look at half mm-hmm. of the U.S.'s roster, right? So we go out and the military <laughs> has kind of planted their seeds, you know, all across the world. And, Literally. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, hey, wait, your dad was in the military? All right, you could play for us, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what – a lot of our guys. I mean, Sergio Deffs. There you go. One of you know, uh, Netherlands, right? And then uh, Timothy Way. Yeah, Way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's good yeah. Stuff. I mean, I I tell you all the time at work, right? Like the single best thing that's ever happened to <laughs> Team USA is the U.S. military, because even in 2014, having guys like Jermaine Jones, uh, you know, that strengthened our roster incredibly, just because they had a, a dad that got horny in Germany. So. Um, <laughs> I mean, Can hey, for sure, it. right? <laughs> right? You can't knock it. So, um, <laughs> Senegal, it does suck that Sadio Mane isn't going to be playing. He's been playing really well for Bayern um, in the Bundesliga. Um, but they do have some guys still, right? Like, they have Edouard Midendi. They have uh, Kalidou Koulibaly. I know my Chelsea's showing right now. You know, don't judge me too hard, <laughs> Hesse. Um, but they, they still got some guys. So, I mean, they... In my humble opinion, I think you you definitely take Netherlands number one in this group, and then probably Senegal. Is that how you guys see it? You know, I honestly think Ecuador is gonna gonna kind of get in there and fight, man. Um, I mm-hmm. think they might be able to take that second spot. Interesting. How about you, Hussey? What do you think? Um, I'm gonna stick with Netherlands and then Senegal. Yeah, just because of the the sheer talent on on both those teams. Yeah. And like there's it. just too much South America love in this World Cup. 
<laughs> yeah, we're already getting Argentina is going to win everything, and I we'll get into that. But I don't understand it. I know they have Messi, but Jesus Christ, uh, Henny, do you have any questions uh, for Group A? Um, just basically, Qatar vertically is culturally strong, right? It grows very tall, very quickly. Um, so I like their opportunity to grow just through money, money alone. Um, and then I, I mean, Netherlands just on vibes. They're always they're always going to make it, right? Yeah, I, I think they're I, I'm, easy. I have nothing. I mean, to be honest, like obviously nothing. I have nothing. Please listen to these other experts while I just mumble. <laughs> Henny, Henny loves those orange kits. Yeah. I mean, the flying yeah. Dutchman wearing an orange kit, like you can't go wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. You get, you guys get me. You guys get me. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we'll move on to group B. This is the one that um, I'm going to be paying attention to pretty hardcore. I think the rest of this country is. Um, we have Group B. We have England. Um, we have Iran, which, good Lord, the the politics surrounding that team. Mm. We have Team USA. And then we have Wales, who's back in the World Cup for like the first time in like 50 years. How are we seeing this one uh, kind of ramp out, boys? I mean, we got to say USA number one, right? Yeah. USA, USA. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> this is the the one group that Henny will actually pay attention to, so I'm excited recovering this one. Um, so obviously, right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to be rooting for Team USA, right? And do we think they actually do stand a pretty good chance? One hundred percent. You know, um, I think the biggest out obviously is going to be against England, right? But uh, we we have the talent we. Have. Uh, mm-hmm. to beat Wales, to beat Iran, if we don't at least get a result from, you know, England. Uh, yeah, I think it's a disappointment. Yeah. And that England-USA game is on Black Friday when we should all be chilling on our couches anyway, eating leftovers, thinking about the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812. <laughs> um you know, hopefully we have as good of a result as our ancestors did, right? That's what I'm hoping for, at least. So, Hesse, what are your thoughts on, on this group? So, if we beat England, is it officially called soccer now? I think so. <laughs> I think Pulley, like, and I, I say Pulley. Hell Pulley-y. yeah, Hesse. <laughs> Christian Pulisic. <laughs> thank you, Henny. God, I was wondering if you're still there. Uh, Christian Pulisic has to has to pull a Mario Balotelli, right, and pull up his, his kit and say it's called soccer. If if he scores against England, right? That's a thing. We have to do that. You know. I mean, he has to, to follow up man in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Okay. Um, so what about individual I the, players? I did take the Freddie Adu over one and a half points. Is that a good play or? It's the best play. Honey. Yeah. Okay, so, we're yeah. good. All right. It's going to pay I'm out. nailing it. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, make sure you pepper it with some Landon Donovan assist numbers on there too. So, you know. There you just... go. Now we're parlaying. Now we're talking. And the podcast is right back in the sweet spot in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So, boys, what about individual players, right? Um, I know, John, you know Team USA about better than anyone I know. Like, who who are some of the young guns that we should be taking a look at? I already mentioned Pulisic, but, I mean, this team is a lot more than one name, right? I mean, that midfield is so exciting. Um, you know, if we could only figure out who the fuck is going to score, I think it would be a good, <laughs> great way to go. You know, you got Gio Reyna, right? Like the parents both played for the U.S. national team. You know, Claudio Reyna was Captain America. Um, you got Eunice Musa. You got Weston McKinney. You got Tyler Adams. Um, mm-hmm. You got Brendan Aronson. Like the dude never stops. I think he's doing wind sprints right now. Um, it's just crazy. And then the back line, uh, you know, a little worrisome at times, perhaps, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of funny just on a little personal note, like Aaron Long, uh, you know, I watched this kid in Tucson play for FC Tucson, an amateur league when he was in college and he couldn't even get on the fucking pitch. And now the dude is, I mean, he went to USL, USA, baby, became this like defender of the year and has just gone on and made some amazing strides coming off of a, a crazy injury, um, you know, ankle injury, uh, missed basically all of last year and fucking fought to make it into the World Cup like that alone is such a cool story. But also like, holy shit, mm-hmm. this kid's actually playing for the U.S. Like, wow. 
Um, yeah. And then talking about the age, sorry, I'm just, I'm on a ramble, I'm just going on the Go age, ahead. you were talking about 23 and that's with a 35 year old center back in Tim Ream, who wasn't even on the radar. Like they thought he was just basically not going to make it. And most people didn't even want him to be on the roster until miles Robinson gets hurt. And then you're like, well, this guy's got to fucking be there because then Chris Richards <laughs> is hurt. And he can't, he's not there. McK- you know, uh, McKenzie's not there. So yeah, just, uh, fun. But Anthony Robinson and Sergio Dest, you, you, it's exciting to watch those fullbacks, you know? And then yeah. Turner and goal, like, yeah, he better be fucking stopping some shots because Stefan didn't even make the roster. So all kinds of crazy stuff. Hopefully it all comes to, comes to play the way it should. If if you had to guess who is going to be our leading goal, uh, goal scorer, because you mentioned it's going to be tough, right? And yeah, I know, Hesse, I know. <laughs> um, who are we thinking, boys? Like, is it Ferreira? Is it, I mean, is it Haji Wright? Like, who are we thinking? I mean, I'm thinking it, it could very easily be Pulisic, right? Because okay. you got, if, if Ferreira is going to be playing, uh, the guy can get into the right spots at times, but. Uh, I think it's basically just going to kind of go through the midfield and the wingers. Like the the strikers are just going to be more of like a false nine, um, you know, be mm-hmm. there to run the channels and kind of distribute, uh, hold up play a little bit, which, you know, Sargent can do. But if we do need a goal late, I think that's probably when they bring in Haji right off the bench. Um, you know, big body can get up there, can win some duels in the air. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking it's got to be Christian because, you know, you figure he's probably going to be the one stepping up for any any uh, set pieces as well. So uh, mm-hmm. some opportunity off that. Um, that's my thought. Yeah, how about you, Hesse? What are you thinking? I'm going to go to Vegas and win a bunch on Timmy Way. Oh, okay. Like going it. with uh, with his pops, the former Ballon d'Or winner. Uh, <laughs> you think he's going to channel pops or what? Yeah, I think so. I mean... Pulley's obviously the one that everyone wants to see do well, but you know, let's go for uh, let's go with the odds makers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, we're we're I placing. Like you hear that, Henny? There's there's your bet right there, bud. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you guys. I'm just kind of curious, like just as I'm like listening to you guys talk about this, like are all the U.S. players all kind of now born overseas? Like that's where you would follow them, <laughs> and then you think it translates to U.S. Or like, could I watch a kid at North Carolina? And he ends up playing for the World Cup, and he's good. John, you know how mm-hmm. USA as a nation works. We we export or import everything. Okay, nowadays we're a service industry uh, related economy. That's the same way in soccer. Mm-hmm. Okay, but go ahead, boys. You can answer a lot better than I can. I mean, yeah, you know the the youth soccer in in this country is it's uh, the pay to play thing. I think weeds out a lot, um, but you've mm-hmm. got a lot of like, uh, you know, I was just referencing Aaron Long, like some really cool stories. Like the kid played at uh, Riverside and then plays on a you know, amateur team in Tucson and gets drafted into MLS. So he takes that route. Uh, Matt Turner, same thing. Turner went from, what was it? Sports center, uh, not top 10, number one to, you know, starting keeper for the world cup team for the U- U.S. men's national team played college ball. Um, you mm-hmm. got these guys that are coming up in MLS youth academies like Weston McKinney, you know, Tyler Adams, um, you know, and as soon as they become adults, they move over. But then you've got the other guys, you know, the ones that are born overseas or um, ones that go over even younger that aren't on this roster right now and are still yeah. trying to find some footing. You know, Conrad De La Puente grows up in the Barcelona Academy, you know, and he, he doesn't make it on this roster, but, you know, probably a name we'll see another four years from now. So I think it's a really cool little mixture of both. Um, you know, U.S. soccer, I don't know if they quite have their identity completely uh, set. Mm-hmm. You know, we kind of had that counter, um, you know, fighting better than, you know, harder than everybody else and wanting to counterattack. Burr Halter's kind of changed it up a little bit, you know, wanting to play out of the back, be a little bit more intelligent of a player. Um, so let's kind of see how it goes, man. Yeah. Hesse, you have any thoughts on that? I mean, it's just interesting to see how they all play together. I mean, I feel like all through qualifying, we didn't see them all play together, this group, mm-hmm. and it's kind of just been shuffled about. So it's going to be interesting to see yeah. how, it, how it meshes together. Yeah. I mean, even somebody like Hodgie Wright, right? Like I remember telling mm-hmm. you, John, 
like not that long ago. I'm like, dude, is he even on the roster anymore? Like I, I <laughs> stopped seeing him. And then he goes over to Turkey and like you told me, starts killing it. Um, similar to like Josie Altador and, you know, um, yeah. now he's back on the squad and we're relying pretty heavily on him. Right. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting. Um, and Henny, just to answer your question a little bit further too. Right. Like I think John said it best, right. I, we do have a lot of good homegrown talent that starts off in the MLS academies or has a really cool story. Like, you know, the one he mentioned, um, and then they go over, they play, um, in England, they play in Germany, you know, like Christian Pulisic, you know, went to Bortman's Academy, right? I believe John, that's where he went. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, you have a few other types of players like Chris or like, uh, Ferreira or his dad, is from Columbia. He's born in Columbia, but then his dad comes and plays in for FC Dallas and he gets a citizenship at like 17 years old. And now he's playing for team USA, right? It's, it's a hodgepodge. It's kind of a 50, 50 mix. Eunice Musa, same thing, right? Um, His parents literally live in England, but he's playing for team USA. He he could have played for uh, four different countries. He had the opportunity to play for, was it us, England, Jamaica. um, I want to say Ghana, um, just yeah, I think Jamaica. Like, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Um, but you know, the, the cool thing that you hear about this team and that you, you can see it, even though, like you mentioned, yeah, they're not always playing together. Somebody's, you know, been hurt or they're you know, mixing the shuffle their lineups around. They, they seem to have really good chemistry and they really do seem mm-hmm. to be a team that wants to be around each other. And, you know, if yeah. you're, if you're able to unite like that, man, like Special anything is possible, happen. right. You know, yep. Absolutely. Miracle on ice type shit, you know? Yeah. And I think looking at the rest of their group, right? Like Wales being back in it after so long, Mm -hmm. Gareth Bale is going to be in the world cup, which um, that's a fun story there. They have some pretty good young talent themselves. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if they have quite the amount of firepower necessary to take out somebody like the USA at that number two spot. Iran. um, I don't, I couldn't tell you who plays for Iran. I mean, John, I know you have a certain idea of, I mean, are they, are they going to be a pushover or are they going to be decent? Yeah, they've got, <clears throat> excuse me, they've got a little mixture, you know, I know they've got some, uh, some veteran players, some guys that have been around a little bit longer, but yeah, they're not, mm-hmm. you don't have any household names or anything. So um, I, I definitely think it's going to be a pushover. I think it'll probably be a, uh, maybe a chippy kind of physical, physical type of game. Um, so, Especially with the political atmosphere too. I'm sure yeah. that will play a part. Yeah, 100%. And then Hesse, I know you're a big Tottenham fan and the captain of England, so just happens to be uh, the striker for Tottenham. Who? What are we looking at with England? Harry Kane, Harry Kane, Harry Kane. <laughs> not Mason Mount, bro? We're not looking at Mason? <laughs> no, 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 Come just on. Harry Kane. Yeah, he'll, yeah, he'll get the most goals. Absolutely, a lot of just... Being at the right spot at the right time. All those little knock-ins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he is incredible. But, I mean, that England team is pretty stacked, right? I know they have a lot of the injuries, like Trent's out, Reese James is out. Um, quite a few people are getting nicked up because this World Cup is in the middle of season. Um, but they still have, you know, your Jude Bellingham's. They have, um, you said Harry Kane. They have Phil Foden. Harry um, Maguire. That's just... Oh yeah, I just had to dump that one in there. Thanks, bud. Killian oh. Trippier, like they they have guys, man. So they're Tri- gonna be a. Go ahead. I was just gonna say Trippier's been killing it too. Like Newcastle yeah. on a terror, he's been playing great, and he's he's a lot of fun to watch flying up and down the yeah. you know, the wings there. And I, but I do feel that Pickford is you know Pickford and Maguire are probably gonna be good for one howler each. So as long as those come <laughs> against the U.S., I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And let's let's not forget either, right? Like England has not been great in international play lately. Gareth Southgate is definitely on the ropes right now. There's already rumors of like Thomas Tuchel being interested in the job. Uh, Poc- uh, Pocatelli, is that how you say his name? The former PSG and former uh, Tottenham coach? Mm-hmm. Pochettino? Oh, Pochettino, yeah. Yeah, he's interested in the job. So uh, Gareth Southgate... Uh, I don't know the last time England won an international game, 
um, it's it's been tough, right? And they just got relegated as well. Um, so we'll see what version of this team comes out. Um, hopefully the U.S. can at least be in the top two. It sounds like they can. Um, but let's move on to the next group, right? Um, group C, we got Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. So definitely some talented, talented teams in this group. What can you boys tell me about this group? I mean, Argentina is going to win it, right? They were predicted. They've, <laughs> they're pretty, you know, they've done the last three and they got simulation. Right. Yeah, yeah. Messi's last stand. They have, yeah, they got Messi right. Their their forwards are insane. How about the rest of the group? I mean, I think not I go all Poland once. number two. <laughs> okay, I was like, I'll Poland. jump in, but you're not going to want to hear it. <laughs> I didn't love, I didn't love Mexico in qualifying, so I think I go uh-huh. Poland number two. Mexico okay. three, Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Arabia four. Mexico but, always plays tough in the World Cup, though, don't they? Yeah, and they've got good keeper play right now. Last time um, Memo Ochoa was in a World Cup, I mean, the dude stood on his head, you know. And when you've got a, it was insane. When you've got somebody in the net like that, um, and the you know as feisty as they can play, um, they 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 can be a tough out. But yeah, they have they definitely did not look good in qualifying uh it mm-hmm. seems like they they hit their peak a couple of years ago and have kind of just been falling ever since but uh, sure you know they they can definitely get hot but you can never go wrong with uh you know Lewandowski over there right in poland do we yeah. do we use the same terminology as we do in hockey like a goalie can stand on their head yeah <laughs> yeah somewhat that's, that's true <laughs> that's a thing we do we do that yeah yeah like you can be Okay. All right. Yeah. No, it's good to know because I, I I just thought that would be hockey, and I I feel like I'd be out of pocket if I was just saying that. And then, <laughs> if I can say that, I mean, I'll use it. I'll just use the hurt. You know, I don't I don't know a lot about hockey either, but I'll throw it out there. Actually, you know, if it makes me seem cool at the uh, soccer club early in the morning. It's actually sad that our other co-host Ben isn't here because I think he would be absolutely um, surprised to see just how many similarities hockey and and, and football have. You know, together. Kind of what I'm saying here, Dugan. I'm glad yeah. you jumped on. I was like, kind of like, I, hey, where is this I, guy? Well, the, what I'm saying is, you know, I know Ben's going to listen to this, and he's a little slow, so I just wanted to say it a little bit more direct for him. So that's all, you know. But perfect, boys. Um, are we thinking Argentina, Poland, then one and two out of this group? I, th- I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, yeah. You, I don't see how it couldn't be. What makes Argentina kind of everybody's pick to win this thing, uh, other than Messi? No, I, was, I mean Messi and Messi. Yeah, yeah. Messi, Messi, check, check. Okay. Right? Uh, they do have Paulo Dybala, right? Um, Latara Martinez. Their forwards are pretty dirty. Uh, um, Di Maria. Um, I mean, Di, Di yeah, Maria. Di Maria. Yeah. He's the one playing in his fourth World Cup. You know. He Insane. was, uh, yeah, in their run to get to the, the finals there, uh, he was instrumental and then ended up getting hurt. I feel that they probably would have won it if he had uh, been healthy. Yeah. What about the rest of their team? You know, are, are they that much of a juggernaut? Do you think that they can take on the Frances of the world, the Brazils of the world? You know, are they on the same par as them? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know if anybody can put forth the uh, offensive firepower that Brazil can, but you know, when it mm-hmm. when you come when you when you're looking at like all eleven players out there on the pitch, like there's not a really soft spot for Argentina. Hmm. Okay. Perfect. Well, let's move on to the next group then, right? We got Group D: France, Australia, Denmark, and Tunisia. France is the heavy, heavy, heavy heavy favorite <laughs> in this uh, group defending for obvious champ. reasons defending champs they got killing mbappe they have benzema um the list goes on with that that team just the immense talent that they have but tell me about the other three people in this group who are, who are we thinking comes in as number two I mean, I, if i were to put my money on anybody i would probably say the danes you know denmark mm-hmm Got Christian Eriksen out there. Yeah, he's making playing well. His triumphant return after, I mean, being just, exiled. Well, <laughs> the tragedy, man. I mean, the guy's heart stops on the, you know, on the pitch, and to be yeah. able to come back and be playing at the level that he's playing at now, it's you tip your hat to him. It's amazing. 
and he is playing stupendous for Man U right now as well. So just just a, he makes all the difference in that midfield. Huge pickup. Yep. Are we not back in the boomers then? Is that is that not what we're doing? <laughs> Are we not thinking uh, that the land down under they don't play football the same way as anybody else, or what? Do they even I mean, get a I point? <laughs> yeah, I mean, does Tunisia finish higher than them? I, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility, right? I haven't seen. I mean, no disrespect. I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody out of Australia. I haven't seen anybody come out of there since who? Well, Timmy Cahill. Uh, he had a yeah. wonder goal, but you know. Yeah, this this is definitely one of the weaker groups for sure. Like I said, France being the super heavy favorite. Um, let's talk about France really quick, though, right? I already mentioned all the talent that they have. Um, what makes them so special, and are they as good as they were in 2018? I mean, I would have to say no, right? I mean, you're you're without some of the keys in the midfield there. You. Pogba's not, a, you know, not going to be playing. Conte's not going to be playing, right? So, right, huge. Um, right. Off, they do have two of many this time. Mm-hmm. That helps. Um, but yeah, you're right. Those were two massive pieces in 2018. So, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, Conte, um, not just on the pitch, but you know, his whole presence. Like everybody just kind of rallied around him. You know, all they did was talk right. about how great of a player he was and how great it was to be around him so yeah and you see that even would, with his his club team with chelsea right and hesse you mentioned uh australia's inability to score a point does that stem directly from ben simmons or how can you react <laughs> <laughs> it's 100 percent because of ben simmons okay I, that's what i thought I, yeah I, so I again it's an nba podcast it's an nba podcast ben simmons jump you know, shots from exactly. the goal line, I mean, people. how do you score a point with Ben Simmons as your jump shoot, shooter, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is not a, a Ben Simmons friendly podcast, just so everybody knows. That was a great little quip, Henny. Go ahead and go back on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just it's kidding, safe. buddy. It's safe over here. <laughs> Henny's just over there really learning, all right? He's going to be pumped as shit for this World Cup. I am. Yeah, I'm listening. So I, I appreciate it. I really do like, like love having you guys on continue to talk and talk and talk so I don't have to. Um, yeah. It's great to get me prepared for the World Cup because I do enjoy it, but I know nothing. Yep. Hence the Ben Simmons commentary. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. Perfect. Well, hey, let's move on to the next group because Group D is kind of easy. But Group E is interesting, right? We got Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan. How's this one shaking up, boys? So, obviously, the – Sexy picks are Spain and Germany, but can Costa Rica make any noise? Mm. No, they I, uh, yeah. they they played USA pretty tough, didn't they? Yeah, any anytime you got those Concacaf games, Costa Rica. I think Costa Rica might be a little bit too old, though. I know uh, you know the last World Cup they had a hell of a run. Um, I think Japan is one to look out for here. Uh, mm. Some skilled, skilled, you know. Players uh, on the ball Kubo. can, I mean, great in counterattacking. Can uh, they just beat the shit out of the U.S. when they played them? So, um, yeah, yeah, I like them. I like Spain. Uh, obviously, Spain. Tell a lot me why you like Spain, John. Yeah. Is it because you have Spanish heritage? Like uh, you know, you know, there's a little, a little bit biased. of that. There. A little biased, but they, <laughs> they've just, you know, they've got so much talent. They, and they've got yeah, so much youth. Um, if they can figure out how to put the ball in the back of the net consistently, they're going to be a tough out. Yeah. Yeah. Who are the big players on Spain? I mean, who's not? I mean, well, De Gea is not there, so that's a good thing for them, right? But uh... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, man. Um, we, we got hmm? Pedri. We got Gavi. Mm-hmm. Who else do we got? Cesar uh, Azpilicueta. I want to see if John or you know Henny can say that. <laughs> um, you still got Busquets, uh, even right? Like, talk yeah. about some craziness. Like that guy's just holding it down. I love right. it. I think Spain is a pretty good mixture of um, some of the old wily vets and some of these young guns, right? Like, I think that's what makes them kind of dangerous. Without a doubt. 
perfect. And then Germany, they are without Timo Werner, um, which that hurts their chances because he's been playing really well um, in the Bundesliga. But tell me, who do we need to look for in Germany? I mean, I love the old guys, man. I love seeing Mueller out there again. Like, What is this, his fifth World Cup or fourth? Fourth. It's his fourth. How old is he? Uh, 123, I think. (laughs) He's Moses. (laughs) Who else do we got on that team, though? Trying to look through their roster right now. I know they have Kai Havertz because obviously I, like, I know that. Yeah, I was like, you guys leave me alone. It'd be like Dirk Nowitzki, obviously. <laughs> if you get a boom in the post, uh, that one-legged jumper is pretty much automatic. I'll just buy some time for you guys. Uh, Horter, Schroeder, Goretzka, yeah. Horter, Towns, German, it's hard to say. Um, <laughs> but definitely Dennis Schroeder. Yeah. What were you going to say, John? I mean, you, you know, you're starting in the goal, right? So you got Neuer, one of the one of the mm-hmm. elite keepers in the game. Um, Sané, you got Rudiger in the back, right? Rudiger's always a good time. Um, even always. Mario Gotze, right? Gotze's making another appearance. Um, uh, midfield, you got Kimmich, uh, Gundogan. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, they've, they're stacked. Um, does this mean Germany's not actually going to be a real player? Cause I feel like they always are. Does this mean that this isn't one of their best opportunities? Maybe that's the simple <laughs> question. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that they're. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just that they're not as well known as they typically are, or as they have been in the in the recent history. Um, but it's not to say that they're not uh, going to be a good out. I know, you know. Um, yeah, <laughs> they're a little bit younger this time around, right? I think they'll make noise, but I don't see them, you know, winning the whole thing. Winning it all. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I think losing Werner definitely hurts a lot, especially with that attacking. But perfect, guys. Let's go into the next group, right? We got Group F. We got Belgium, Canada, Morocco, and Croatia. If you were going to ask me who are the top two in that group, I would definitely go Belgium and Croatia in that order. Um, is that how you guys are seeing it? You don't have Canada going all the way? I love Alfonso Davies. Don't get me wrong. He's an absolute dog. But he's about it, at least I, from my knowledge. I'm sure John's going to correct me right about now. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying Canada ran through CONCACAF qualifying like nothing. And that, I mean, granted, that's CONCACAF, right? So, but U.S. struggled. And we're talking about U.S. finishing top, you know, top two in their group against, you know, their competition, which is you know, a little bit lighter than this one. But um, I wouldn't yeah. sleep on them. I mean, but you got hats off to Luka Modric, man. Like all the dude does is win. And ever since he's been yep. in the midfield with Croatia, they've just been beautiful and fun to watch. You got Kovacic down there as well. Um, they also have the absolute best kits in the entire World Cup, in my opinion. Oh, so it's dope. Just, it's just me. So pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, Hassi, how do you see it? I I see Belgium one, Croatia two. Yeah, and and tell me a little bit about that Belgian team, right? Because we mentioned the golden generation for the U.S. The Belgium, this was their golden generation, right? Yeah, and I mean, they're what are they? What is their FIFA rank two? Yeah, they're incredible. They're they're, they're top 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 class. So I mean, I think they go pretty far, if not to the final, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see. I mean, they do have they do have an interesting group with Croatia, and then we have no idea what Canada is going to be. So we'll see. Yeah, Morocco could be at least feisty, right? Hakim Ziyech is playing for them once again mm-hmm. um, after saying that he was retired. Um, so that's a little bit more of a game. But with Belgium, I think anytime you have you know Kevin De Bruyne, Eden Hazard. Romelu Lukaku, if he's not just fat and out of shape, um, you know, I have to say it. I'm sorry. I'm a jaded Chelsea fan. I don't want to tell you. Um, that's a, it's a dangerous team, right? And then their keepers top class as well. So um, Group F is actually looking like one of the scarier ones. Wouldn't you guys agree? Group of death. Yeah, definitely see that. Perfect. 
let's go on to the next one. We only got a couple more groups. We got group C or group G. If I can read, Jesus Christ. We got Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, and the Cameroon. Uh, Brazil's heavy favorite here, right? I mean, there's no debate. Brazil's won. Yeah. Like, not even just in this group, right? Brazil <laughs> might be the number one team in the whole world, right? With just the attacking options that they have, the keepers that they have. Uh, they have a pretty damn good back line as well. And am I speaking out of school here or is that pretty fair? No, I think they're heavy yeah, I mean, favorites and heavy betting favorites too. Yeah. yeah. What what can we expect out of this team, guys? Goals. Lots and <laughs> lots of goals. Yeah. I mean, Tell me about some of those attacking options. I mean, you can you can put what, six, you know, forwards out there essentially, right? Just throw everybody mm-hmm. out there and have them just crash. Like, and you could do that almost because of the, the talent that they have in goal and in the back line too. Like it's, it's crazy. Like they could play with almost no midfield and teams would be afraid mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. But they have a great midfield too, right? Like Casemiro's mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. there. Like they are definitely the most well-rounded team out of any of these teams. And it's not even close in my opinion. Um, perfect. What about some of these other teams, though? Go ahead, Henny. What were you going to say? I was going to say, I just have to ask, like, as a casual observer, right, of soccer, like, I always have enjoyed the way Brazil plays, right? And it's the beautiful game and all of those mm-hmm. things. What is it that, that Brazil does? Like, if I'm just a casual observer, I'm an idiot, which I just am. So I'm just describing <laughs> myself, essentially. But, like, what is it that they do different? Or what is more exciting? I hear you saying that you can push six forwards out there. I mean, what does that mean? Like, can you translate it to something that is more common to us? Like, I mean, maybe not it's American football, maybe it's basketball or whatever, but like, is there a way that you can translate that to the common fan? That's like just jumping into this. Why is it more fun to watch Brazil play? Cause I know that that's true, uh-huh. but I don't necessarily know why. Yeah. I mean, you watch, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas city chiefs, right? They can just do things that nobody else can do offensively. Like the throws that he can make, uh, the way that he can connect with the Kelsey, like um, that just understanding that these players have with each other and the way they can make it look like like backyard fun stuff that we used to do playing football, right? Like that's the Hoga Bonito, you know, that's what Brazil does. They just get out there and they play with such flair and fun and it's just infectious and it's just cool to watch them do things and you're like holy shit like just go you know google ronaldinho and just type his name into youtube and sit back and let your jaw drop like it's just amazing yep it it certainly is i was going to compare to the phoenix suns because you know anyone can score (laughs) yeah wow especially after last night's game messi (laughs) You know what? We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> I, I love that, though. Um, and thank you again, you know, for for translating that for some of our people that may not be as as keen to what those terms mean. But you know, I think it just comes down to they have athletes, right? And they have mm-hmm. creative athletes. Um, Brazil's been good at at soccer for a long, long time. You mentioned it being part of a, you know a culture or not being part of a culture. Mm-hmm. It is certainly part of the culture in Brazil, right? Like they live and breathe football. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a fun team to watch. Uh, they're my pick to win it all. I, I know that's kind of a pussy pick, but like it's just too hard to not pick them to win it all. Um, let's move on to the last group, and this one's actually me. I think a little bit oh, of fun. Wait up! Who who do, who are we going with number two though? All that Ooh, love true. To, all that love to Brazil. I was going to say Serbia, Switzerland, or Cameroon. I was going to say Serbia because I work with Serbians and they terrify me. So I'm not going to go against them. Ah. Are are we thinking that Vlahovic is going to just go off or what? (laughs) I mean, I wanted to bring up Mitrovic, man. Um, You know, the the striker for Fulham, the dude's been playing amazing in the Premier League. And I think he could be a dark horse for uh, Golden Boot over there, you know? I love that. Um, so we're thinking then Serbia. We don't think like Cameroon stands it or stands a chance, or I mean, even Switzerland has some guys, right? 
Yeah, no, I don't know if it'll be Serbia. I'm, I think I predicted uh, Brazil first and Switzerland second. Um, you know, Serbia could sneak in there, you know, Cameroon, um, you know, always a threat. Um, but yeah, I just don't think they got it in them this year. Okay. Perfect. So I, I guess, man, you know what? We need a tiebreaker. And who better to get a tiebreaker from than Mr. John Henningsen? Henny, hit us. Who's number two in this group? What are even my choices? I guess Serbia I guess, or I, Switzerland? I just, I just want Brazil. Um, <laughs> Brazil and Brazil. Serbia or Switzerland. So it's like where I can keep my money or just one of these like beautiful like places in the that are like in between Europe and like you get like some clear one. Uh, I'm just going to lean. I'm going to go Cameroon. Just put your, all, <laughs> you put all your money on. You can't I, I'm go gonna go Cameroon. Off. I'm going, yeah, no, I'm going off, off the, what? These guys have no commitment. I'm like going it. Cameroon. Why not Cameroon number two? Why, Cause now why we not? have a three way tie. A, that's what we want. <laughs> that's what we do. We build controversy. It doesn't really matter. I've been asking dumb questions. These guys can't, these guys are experts, right? I mean, yeah, this, nothing. Cameroon. This is Let's the sport where you can I, have I a tie, you. right? So, yeah, I, three-way um, tie. This is <laughs> this is what America <laughs> wants, or Europe I, wants, or soccer wants, or so I, guess, so, wants. so I guess Dugan breaks the tie. Oh, great! Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Serbia because Switzerland lost today in a friendly, and it gives me pause. So, yeah, we'll go Serbia. Well, they do. Sorry, their, their flag is like. An aid sign. It's like hell. <laughs> it's hard to pick them, and they it's never pick them. It's like they were. Yeah. Like, it, like I either like I either want to buy a watch or call nine one one. Like it's the only two <laughs> feelings that I genuinely get when I see their flag. So I don't know if that True. helps at all. I think of chocolate, but that's because I'm a fat ass. So mm. I don't know. Um, yeah, last personal. group. Yeah, that one. I, I shouldn't say that to myself. Anyway, Portugal, Ghana. God, Ghana has been the thorn in the side of the U.S. for many oh. of the years. Um, yeah, Uruguay and the Korean Republic without Sonny. Um, how are we seeing this panning out, boys? Anyone Remember, but Portugal. Ronaldo, Ronaldo is busy talking to Pierce Morgan, so he probably won't play much. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with he's, Uruguay is he going on that show. Yeah, dude, he he's, it came out the last two days. He went on Pierce Morgan and absolutely <laughs> fucking like drone striked all of Man U and Messi. Oh, like, he shit all over Man U. Oh, oh, my yeah. God. This is why. Yeah. All right, this is why soccer is great. That I I'm not into it, but. It's basically the NBA for the world. I mean, I get yes. that it's mm-hmm. like there's a, there's a reason I should get this and love this, but I just like can't invest. But, but I'll just get out of the way here. But that's hilarious <laughs> that he's on. It's hilarious that he's on Pierce Morgan to me. I'm like, of course he is. Perfect. What a great, what a great thing to do. Yeah, he's absolutely destroyed his legacy at Man U, but I don't think he really cares. So it's fine. Um, but yeah, so Hesse says anybody but Portugal. So who are we thinking, Hesse? Well, first, before I go into picks, uh, is Sonny actually out the whole cup? I thought he was going to play. Uh, last I read, he was out, but I could be wrong. I'm also going off knowledge from our friend Chris uh, Chris Wynn, who is his loves him more than any man I've ever known. So, I mean, he is, he is incredible, but uh, I'm going your way and Ghana. Wow, just totally out the box, and there's definitely nothing. Saying uh, you're you're pick you're not picking Portugal because you dislike a player, right? I mean, it's just talent is talent, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I just hate Portugal. <laughs> not a fan of paella. All right, cool. <laughs> That's fine. And and John, what are we thinking? Um, I, yeah, I was gonna go with Uruguay, and then uh, I was just actually trying to look up Sonny real quick and see, and it says that he's willing to take a risk for the World Cup. So I think if he is you know capable of playing maybe 90 percent i think it's south korea or korean republic um but if not then i guess ghana yeah this is definitely a weird weird bracket um the casual fan would say portugal but i think there's a lot going on there right now right yeah. with everything around cristiano um, Bruno Fernandez is really good. He had a hat trick today in a friendly. 
Um, they do have Jao Felix, but the rest of these teams are really good. Uruguay has like Darwin Nunes. Korean Republic will have apparently Sunny. Um, this is definitely a strikers um, group, right? Yeah, and I don't, I don't think Uruguay is going to be biting off more they can chew. Um, you know, Suarez, little pun there, but uh, yeah, I think I they're going to be able it. to handle that. I even and got John, that John, that's well played. <laughs> even I understand that one, buddy. That's that's back uh, in Henny's day, so right? that's good. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Perfect, boy. So, are so did we both pick Ghana and Uruguay? Then or are we are we adding in Korea with Sunny, or what are we thinking? I think we go with those two. Ghana and Uruguay, but Uruguay Ghana, right? Uruguay, Uruguay Ghana, number yeah. one. Mm-hmm. All right, well. Hesse, you have the simulator or whatever you said, right? Did you plug these in? Yeah. So, round of 16. First game, we've got Netherlands versus USA. Oh, God. Kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them have good uniforms, man, because those orange kits are not – which, by the way, I will just say I'm, I'm a heavy uniform guy in this podcast. I know you guys might be new to this. Maybe you listen along. I forgive you if you don't. Netherlands kits are nice, and I like the idea of just saying kits instead of uniforms. So much cooler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's great, dude. Uh, like, Team USA's like, kits are terrible. I was going to say, that, yeah. Like, and, you know, you got NHL guy Ben, where they're bringing their sweaters, and I'm like, dude, come on. Like, that's such Northeastern <laughs> college nerd stuff. Give me a kit all day. <laughs> well, it's it's fully encompassing, and, you know, it's it's – it's shorter than the word uniform, so it's it's just more efficient. And then their really. equipment managers um, are called kit men, which is fucking awesome too. That's that's yeah. way cooler than equipment manager. Group yeah, so cool. <laughs> boxes. That's so cool. Yeah, and I don't even know what that means, but I love it. Yeah. So Netherlands wins that game, right? Right, John. They totally win this game, right? I mean. You know, everything says, right, that the Netherlands should win and that, the, you know, the U.S. is going to be happy to get out of the group. But fuck, man, you know, anything can happen. And knockout football is just totally different than group stage. Um, and anything can happen. And we see that constantly. So I would, uh, you know, I want to I, I really do want to believe that, uh, that you know, red white and blue can pull one out there now is that your heart talking or do you honestly feel like because we're so young we're so scrappy could we could we pull it off and hesse you can jump in here too i mean i believe that we will win let's go homerville i believe that we will win yeah you know i mean they have if, I knew you know, if I knew it, these guys painted their nipples, dude. I told you. <laughs> he said tattooed, Penny. Tattooed. Yeah, I like the tattoos. Although, you know, maybe the fingernails and toenails will have a little red, white, and blue on them for this. Hey, uh, yeah. You want to put a bald here. eagle anywhere in your body, I support you. He said anywhere. I will get a bald <laughs> eagle tattoo if USA wins this whole thing. All right, oh. you heard it here first. Yeah, Audience. count it. Book yes. it. This, <laughs> this will be, oh. will be oh. this hold is recorded. Your yes. This is recorded. This will be all – and I'm just letting you know right now, Hesse, we had 360 downloads on our last episode all over the world. So yes. there's going to be a lot of people holding you Happening. accountable. Can, can I one-up it and just make it a pulley tattoo with the bald eagle? Jesus, Ooh. dude, you can stop at any point here, but yes, you can. <laughs> All right, let me tell you. But if you have a little stopping. beyond that, we're listening and we're all <laughs> listening. I mean, who's to say that you won't get the whole entire roster, you know, just on your back, mm-hmm. you know, team photo style? Yes, all just celebrating, holding up the cup, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you both believe that we can win. I think logically that is probably a tough sell, but I also know that young and scrappy can usually make some noise, right? Henny did the Warriors back in like 2000, whatever it was, 2010, did they not beat the number one seeded Dallas Mavericks? 
Hundred percent, Scrappy Suns team coming out of the bubble, right? There's history to provide this over and over again, and no matter what sport you follow, a team that is slightly doubted but plenty talented can always do. And I believe, and who doesn't want Hesse to get a tattoo? Come on, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got to go with it. So USA mm-hmm. moves on. All right, what do we got next, Hesse? Argentina versus Denmark. Ooh, okay. Or we're probably thinking Argentina here, right? Messy, messy, yeah. messy. Yeah. Okay. Yep, I would agree. Who we got after that? England versus Senegal. Oh, okay. Are we thinking mm-hmm. England pulls it off, or is this where the buck stops? If Senegal was full strength, I might say that, but I'm going to go England. Okay. John, you thinking the same? Yeah, I, I kind of am. I'm looking, you know, I'm thinking about the keepers, um, you know. <laughs> I mean, talk about both being due for howlers, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I think I think England goes. I'll say this. If England is able to put Mindy in a position where he has to use his feet, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of goals will be, will be had. Exactly. So, yep, and Mason Mount knows that, so watch out for that. Um, but so does every other Premier League player. Um, what's the next matchup? France, Poland. Ooh, I like it. A little Lewandowski versus Mbappe action, but it's France, right? It's got to be France. Yeah, agreed. Okay, and then what do we got? Spain versus Croatia. Oh, oh man, wow. this elimination stage. One. God, this gets me bricked up. You know, oh. Jesus, um, that is really tough because Croatia has got the wily vets that have been doing it for a while, but are still good. Uh, but Spain's got them young, young kids and a few wily vets. I'm probably going to go Spain. Where are you guys going? I think I'm going Croatia, man. Um, you know, you, your ancestors weep. I know. <laughs> like I, I want, I want to pull for Spain, like La Furia Roja, man. Like I want to pull for them, but yeah, I think, I think, I think Croatia takes this one. A little bit more experience, Hesse. What are you thinking? Um, I'm going to go Spain. I don't think Croatia has the magic two cups in a row. Mm. Mm. So if we're going okay. Spain, John, Henny, do you wait? Actually, Henny, you could veto this. What are you thinking? Ooh. Cameroon, Cameroon. <laughs> That's where I'm at. I'm riding. You know where I ride, Cameroon. Now, uh, if I had a tie break, I'm just going to lean towards John. And, and though he didn't want to, you know, do it himself, let's let's roll with Spain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going Spain. What's the next matchup we got? Brazil versus. It doesn't really matter. Uh, Ghana. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it kind of matters. I mean, the Golden <laughs> Eagles—they're fun. Brazil. They've knocked out. They've knocked out giants before. But yeah, Brazil all day for sure. <laughs> all right. Uh, same colored flags. Belgium versus Germany. Oh my God! It's World War II all over <laughs> again. I love it. <laughs> oh man, that's that's actually a tough game. Like, out of everything that we've gotten so far, this is the toughest one for me. What are you boys thinking? Belgium wins 4-1. Ooh, Ooh. newer newer just gets clowned, huh? Okay. okay. John, okay. what are we thinking? Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I like Belgium. Um, <laughs> I, what you say when you throw out that 4-1, to one, I just think of uh, – you know, Germany did to Brazil seven to one, and I'm like, man, if I could, if that could go back to Germany somehow, that would be pretty fucking funny. But yeah, no, I, I want, man, mm-hmm. I'm telling you, this is tough for me because Belgium always drops the ball in elimination. <laughs> you know, like they have this golden generation, yeah. they have all this talent, and then they fuck it all up. Um. I don't think they fuck it all up against Germany without Timo Werner. So I agree with you. Who do we got next? Uruguay or Serbia. Ooh, huh. that one's interesting. Like That's another good striker matchup. We have Darwin Nunes and Dusan Vlahovic. What are we thinking, boys? Well, here's my question. 
will there be more cards or more goals in that game? Well, they're both Ooh. feisty as shit. <laughs> uh, you know, there have been ears that have been bitten off from one side, and then there is a giant mafia on the other side. So, I don't know. Choose your pick. John, what are you thinking? I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go with Uruguay still. Okay. I see. Come on. Where are you yeah, going? Yeah, I'm going South America love for this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Henny, are you thinking the same thing? Do you just really love Uruguay because they have a, a, a freaking cool-ass flag with a sun on it? Yeah, Uruguay is kind of cool to me. I, I agree. Yeah, Uruguay has been cool to me. She actually get me... Exactly. I'm like, they had that blonde guy, Forne, Forte, Forle. Diego Forlon, hell yeah. Yeah, Forlon. Kind of, <laughs> that guy kind of like spoke to me. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I can move the ball right. And then, you know, Suarez yeah. obviously is kind of a weirdo. But yeah, I'm kind of, I think I have to go. <laughs> I got to roll South America on this one from, you know, just right. completely nonsensical, no idea what's going on answer point of view. We're going straight, Ser- or not Serbia. Holy shit, straight South America. All right, next one. So All right, bring so, pick of the so week. that's round of 16. So now we move on to the quarterfinals. I'm going to go in the opposite direction so we can talk about USA last. So first one, okay. Belgium or Uruguay? Belgium all day. Belgium. That one's a lot easier. Yeah. John? Yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I'm going Belgium. Yeah. Okay, next one. All right, next one. France versus England. Ooh, that would be a good matchup. God, the, the ah. battle of the channel. Oh, my yeah, God. Is there, any, is there any history there? <sighs> yeah, there sure is. That's for another <laughs> podcast, though. You know, I'll I'll make some recommendations. <laughs> Just wondering if they had ever met each other. That is a filthy, filthy, filthy matchup. Oh, my God. But Harry Maguire is probably starting, so we're going to go France. I got France. <laughs> Yeah, Mbappe. John? Yeah. Yeah. Harry Maguire is going to shit the bed for sure. Uh, Henny, there's no tiebreaker, but are you are you going to just jump on board? Yeah, I'm going to throw with everybody else, France. Mbappe, I understand. I know. I see. It translates to me without knowing soccer. That guy makes <laughs> sense to me. He's been on back-to-back FIFA covers, so he's definitely good. You know. Um, what's the next matchup we got? Brazil versus Spain. Ooh. Wow. God, this is this is why we love the World ah, Cup, right, boys? Exactly. This right here. God, man, I like Unai Simon or Simon, however you say his name, for keeper for Spain. But God, that that team in Brazil is filthy. Yeah, I gotta go with Brazil. Yeah, I gotta go Brazil. Brazil. Yeah, let's go Brazil. Okay. All right, okay. last of the quarterfinals. Rolling with, rolling with the boys. USA. <laughs> the USA versus Argentina. Oh, God. Is this where our patriotism just ceases? The young team versus the old team. Yeah. Messi is 65 years old. Guys, guys, this shouldn't be hard. Messi is going to make Walker Zimmerman shit his pants. Yeah. That that's gonna happen for sure. <laughs> um, you know, I just I kind of hold on to the little the little hope, uh, and it throws the, me back the Rudy moment. You know, U.S. Uh, what was it? U.S. and the Confederations Cup, uh, in the lead up to South Africa when they beat Spain to make it to a final to play against Brazil to lose, but still. Um, you know, they've got it in them. But, yeah, they do, man. Yeah, but no, uh, Argentina. Damn it. Maybe in four years, right? When we're hosting it, yeah, we'll we'll we'll, we'll host it and hoist the trophy. Host it and hoist it. You heard it here first. Yes. I see you're thinking the same I, thing. Yeah, right? I want to go U.S., but I'm going to go Argentina. I already know that Henny is. Going to say the U.S. because he wants to see a tattoo on Hesse. That's yeah. strictly the only reason. I have Please. no other reason. I also played a lot of like 96 World Cup action on Super Nintendo. And I mean, <laughs> I I never lost. I don't know what everybody else's problem was. I was a goal-getting machine. Uh, I think like the USA was like, dressed as like a dachshund or like a weird puppy. 
it was a weird time, but uh, it was a weird time on the internet and the video games and all of that. But I mean, obviously at the same time, like, dude, I mean, I think if you're, if you're not rooting for USA, you kind of want to see Messi win, don't you? Or am I wrong? Yeah. More than Ronaldo for sure. Well, he, he, he was out group stage, so we're good. No, I know. I'm just saying just in general, but yeah, we, we murdered him in the first round. So we're fine. Um, all right. Next all one. Right, final four. Argentina versus Brazil. Oh, wow. <laughs> how's that not, how's that not yeah, a championship? That's what I was going to say. That's got to be the final. That's sad. Oof. Georgia versus uh, Alabama a week too early. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, why, yeah, are we doing you this, why are we doing this now? Like, what? Yeah, what is the whole point? It's like when the Suns oh. miss the Warriors. It's you know, it's all those things. Chiefs, it's Chiefs. All Bills. you Americans, this, this, yeah, this is Chiefs Bills. Mm. This is Bama Georgia. Uh, basketball is a little bit more parody, but yeah, this is what that is. So, oh man, for me, I. I have to go Brazil still. I just, like I said, I think they're the most complete team in the, in the world. All right. Semifinal yeah. two. Are we all going Brazil? Yeah. Looking at it, I think, uh, you know, top to bottom, got to go with, the, I just don't see how you're going to outscore Brazil. You know? No, I don't either. And they, their defense is solid exactly. as shit too. So. First, first string or second string keeper, you know, is better than the majority of other keepers out there. Yeah, and and Henny really likes uh, Brazilian steakhouses. I'm sure. So Henny, you going with Brazil? Yeah, green flag is up, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Keep bringing that meat. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right, what's the other side of this coin? France versus Belgium. Oh, France. So waffles or crepes? Give me a crepe. Oh, man. John's taking his time. This is easy for me because I don't believe in Lukaku. I love De Bruyne, but Lukaku is such a piece of shit that I hope he gets this close to a final and then gets shit on by France. Yeah, I, I think De Bruyne is just playing out of his mind now. Like, all he does is just give goals away to you know anybody that's standing near him so i think belgium the difference is is that he has a fat ass lukaku and he doesn't have you know the greatest striker in the world with erling holland that's the only problem mm-hmm. yeah but he was doing it before holland was there too that's true i see what are you thinking we need a tiebreaker see, i feel like brazil france is such a safe pick that I'm going to go Belgium. Wow. I like it. So we're going, we are, we are, wow. So we're going Belgium, Brazil. By the way, who is Holland playing for uh, during this World Cup break since he's not playing with Norway since they didn't make it? It ended up being fake. (laughs) Yeah, I got, I got bamboozled at work. Uh, That's fine. Uh, That was awesome. That's that's why Twitter's burning to the ground. That would so. have been hilarious, but you know, yeah, I mean, and just to talk about, like, it's just sad that some of these players we don't even get to see. But you know, it is sad. Yeah, from the injured to they're from a country that sucks ass mm-hmm. outside of themselves. It is sad, but it's okay. Um, cool. Let's talk about the final, then, boys. We got Belgium, the golden generation, finally reaching their potential against a country that has been insanely good at football for 60 years, right? We got tradition on one end and unreal potential not being quite met the last few World Cups, but they are primed and ready to do it. Who do we got? What's the over-under on uh, somersaults for Neymar? (laughs) Oh, my God. This whole time I forgot Neymar existed. Yeah. And now I'm sad. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I got it. I out of that, I'm gonna have to go Brazil. Like, okay, Hesse, what do you got? I mean, I'd rather just go make a bunch of money and bet bet Belgium. Hmm. Okay, and then I'm gonna go. You know what? No, 
I'm going to abstain from this vote, and we're going to put it on Senor Henny. Henny, Ooh. what do you like more? Do you like chocolate or do you like steak? Do you like uh, meat? Steak. Oh, yeah. Give me the beaches. Give me the steak. Give me the history of cattle, just like Nebraska. Give me Brazil all day. I mean, like, look, if we're if I am just going to stand as a casual observer and only root for a team that's not. Of course, I'm rooting for America. I'm rooting for US of A. It's where I'm born. It's where I'm from. It's a great melting pot of all of these wonderful countries. But if I only have to pick one outside of us, like it's very easy to just pick Brazil. It seems like it's the home of the sport. It's where it thrives. It's where it's great. It's why I asked the questions earlier about why is it different. I'm going to lean on Brazil. Now, Belgium is a nice story. I've seen them and I can see the talent that that country has as a casual observer just jumping in. Great, great talent there. But we got to go with Brazil. We do. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we're going to have Neymar of all freaking people lifting up the trophy at the, at the end of the tournament. And uh, I don't think it's any surprise, right? They just really are so freaking stacked. The only way this goes south is if they pull up Brazil and they get beat eight to one by Germany, yeah. uh, which could happen, right? Could definitely happen. Uh, but are you, are you boys satisfied with how this ended up? We'll hold up in anticlimactic fashion. We didn't go for the third place yet. Oh, look at yeah. me forgetting about Argentina that. Argentina versus okay. France. That's filthy as well. This is why the World Cup rocks. Like they have a third place game. That doesn't really matter, but it does. Um, I'm going to go with Argentina because I want Messi to win something. Yeah, I would say that. That's probably where I'd lie to. What about you, Hesse? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to Messi. Let's go third. Perfect. And then Henny, what do you got? Painful. Doesn't this hurt again for, for Messi then? Like, he's never won, right? So right. this has to be it. If it, It's like this or... His career's kind of got the uh, LeBron taint, or you know, I mean, that's not LeBron. That's not fair. That's not fair to LeBron. But like, who's that guy that just you know? It's the Barkley. It's the, the yeah. Nash. The Nash. Yeah. It's who? Who is that? That he doesn't get anything, and third place doesn't. Yeah. He's the Dan Marino. Yeah, that's where I was. Yeah, He's the Dan, Dan Marino. Marino. Yeah. So yeah. so at least all right. So then. It's, Spin zone, right? He has a nice little steakhouse in the Hooters Casino in uh, Las Vegas. <laughs> I mean, it's not all bad news. It's not all bad news for Messi. I mean, who doesn't want a steakhouse at a strip club, you know, or whatever? Yes. Dude, it's even better for him, Henny. I know you don't know this, but he owns a very large stake in uh, what is it, Inner Miami? He's gonna he's gonna get third place in the World Cup, finish up his season with PSG, get some sick French money from Qatar. And then he's just going to come on over to Miami and live it up and eat empanadas and drink Mai Tais. It's going to be great. <laughs> he, and, he and Ronaldo are going to play together at uh, Miami then? God, that would be electric. I would become a I'd become an Inter-Miami <laughs> fan for at least one season just for the fireworks. Wow. But we'll see what happens. Well, boys, this has been an incredible episode. We we don't cover you know footy a lot on this podcast because I'm typically the only one that gives a shit. But having both of your collective knowledge on this show has been awesome. I know that our audience is going to appreciate it. Um, I am so incredibly pumped that I'm actually going to watch a Qatar versus Ecuador game on Sunday, which I would have never thought that would be possible. <laughs> but we're here, boys. We are here. I feel like especially me and me and John have been talking about this for, what, buddy, like six months Dude, at work? Seriously. And and we're here, and I'm excited for Team USA. I don't think we we don't even go as far as we, you know, vision boarded it for us today. Um, but in four years, watch the hell out. This is a young, scrappy, talented as shit team, and we got some guys that aren't even on this team that should come up through the pipeline in the next four years that are even just as special. Um, I'm thinking of Brendan's brother, um, you know, and it's going to be fun. Um, I absolutely get up for the world cup every four years. And this one I am definitely more invested in. And honestly, it's going to be fun to see how it impacts uh, the rest of the leagues. After the fact, we have the winter transfer window right after, you know, that somebody like James Rodriguez is going to get paid Hmm. um, fat and he's going to suck ass after the fact, but I'm here for it again. So again, um, 
I'm going to say thank you, Henny. I'm sure you have some words for him. Um, if you want to, you know, send us off, um, go right ahead. No, just just thanks to the boys for coming in and uh, helping us uh, navigate soccer. It's definitely something that's new to me. Shout out to my cousin Nico, Nico Jacober, playing in the Portugal leagues right now. Uh, he's my soccer vibe. That's all I've got. Um, and yep. beyond that, thank you all so much for listening. The podcast has been growing for whatever reason it's been growing. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for being a part of this journey. And thank you for you two fellows for helping us uh, continue that journey. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And the audience, don't forget, right? Just because we're growing, the buck does not stop here. Please like, subscribe to this show, rate it. Please leave us a rating on Apple, on Spotify, what have you. It helps us immensely. Leave a, a rating. That also helps so much. Twitter might not be here in, in, in six hours, but if it is, follow us on there. John runs an awesome, awesome campaign on there. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. We're all over the place. And uh, enjoy some footy this weekend. We we already went over earlier this week um, the domestic stuff, right? The, the college football, the NFL. But guys, we have a world game that is being played in front of us this Sunday. Please tune in and enjoy it. It only happens every four years. And, and take some of this knowledge that these two gentlemen were gracious enough to give us and uh, enjoy. And with that, we will talk to you later. Bye.